Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Beginners Free CAD series for version one. Common and intersection essentially mean the same thing. When two volumes intersect, the overlapped volume, the material common to both, is kept while the rest is removed. There are two workflows to achieve this. In our first workflow, we'll use the single part design body to create an intersection with an inverse profile. Here we have a flat metal plate, which has been created with a simple sketch from the top plane, followed by a pad. We want to change the shape of this to a different configuration. Let's say a Z shape profile. In a usual process, we would tackle the subject from the side, creating the shape profile and using it in a pad operation. Then switch into the top plane. We add the holes with a pocket operation before finally filleting the edges to round them off. An intersection workflow would allow us to approach this differently with just two operations. We still create the pad using the same side profile, but when switching to the top view, we draw the whole of the top profile instead of just the holes. If we invert the profile by adding a rectangle around the outside, we essentially create a cookie cutter. This can be then used as a pocket to pocket the whole of the top profile through the existing volume. This removes the need for additional operations such as the fillet. I'm going to quickly show you that workflow using FreeCAD. When the part design, and I've created a new document. I'm going to create a body and then create a new sketch. I'm going to create this on the XZ plane. So this is going to be the shape of the body. I'm just going to use a polyline and quickly sketch a shape in here. So I'm not worried about dimensions. I'm just going to add something like this. And we'll add some basic constraints just for the sizing. Hover over the end, Quinston, and click. Let's right click to cancel the tool and use some horizontal and vertical constraints just to straighten up any edges that need it. Right click to cancel, make this edge and this edge in here equal. That's close, I'm not worried about dimension constraints, not worried about being fully constrained. Just using this as a demonstration. Make sure the sketch is selected, use the pad, we'll pad it symmetrical to plane, and we'll set that something like 30 millimeters. Let's hit OK. So this is the shape that we want. But if I look from the top, the top profile what we have is going to be something like this. So I'll select that face, add a sketch. We we'll use the slot. And we want something like this. Now it's important to remember that this shape needs to be within this bounds. So I can import some geometry and let's take this edge and this edge, right click to cancel and make the arc and the imported edge tangent and the same on the other side as well. That just keeps it within the bounds. Let's add some circles. Again, I'm not going to go fully constrained. I'm just going to add some basic constraints. These are going to be the holes. And if I take these two and make those equal, then if I close, you can see we have that sketch sitting up on there. So this is the profile that we want from the top view. But if I pocket this through, obviously it's just going to remove that shape. So let's cancel that, come back into the sketch. And this time we'll add a rectangle around the outside. Now this rectangle will remove anything within its bounds. And then this geometry within will act as a cookie cutter. So if you think that's being removed in here, this will be added and these parts will be removed. So right click to cancel and close. And now I can use that sketch. It's already been selected, it's in green. And if we use the pocket, you can see the shape through all that's been left. There's a simple intersection workflow. So let's okay that. This might seem like a very small improvement for such a simple piece, but let's change the requirement by adding a convex profile to the shape. Now we're aiming for something like this. This is where the inverse pocket comes in useful. 
The shape can be created with a simple profile and an additive sweep. We then use the top profile with the addition of the rectangle to create an inverse pocket. And this will cut the desired shape from the volume. Again, let's demonstrate that workflow. Creating a new body and a new sketch. We're going to first create the profile. I'm going to look along the YZ plane and create a sketch upon there. The profile I'm going to create is a simple arc. Connect up to the horizontal axis and then over, click again and come up to create our arc. Right click to cancel and take this point and place it along the vertical axis with the coincident constraint. That is now centered. I'm going to quickly make a profile by selecting the arc and then right click in and use the offset geometry. And we'll create an offset by moving the mouse up and then just drop in the geometry by clicking the left mouse button. The arc is still available inside. I'm just going to select that and hit delete. So this is now a valid profile. Let's hit close. Now I'm going to create the path. For the path, we we'll use the XZ plane. Make sure nothing's selected. So when we create a sketch, placed upon the base planes, and we'll use the XZ plane. So this is going to be our path. Again, I'm going to quickly sketch that using the create polyline. And let's have a look around about the center. Again, remember I'm not using any constraints. I was just using simple geometry just to get through the demonstration. Right click to cancel, right click to cancel again. And let's just place a vertical constraint on there. Hit close, so I have the profile and I have the path. Our first sketch is the profile. Select that sketch and then use the additive pipe. We now need a path, the path to sweep along, select object, and just select the path sketch. Now, if we look, we can see the transition here is invalid. This goes straight along here and then just goes up. It needs to follow this edge. So let's change the corner transition. Drop this down and use right corner. And you can see now that's fixed the issue. Let's hit OK. So we've got our shape. Let's zoom out, make sure nothing's selected. I'm going to place a sketch across the top using the base plane, so there's nothing selected. Let's create a sketch. And it doesn't really matter whether it's placed because we either pocket upwards or downwards. Let's use the XY plane. I need to section view this because this is on top or to make it easier, let's click on model. Let's click on the sketch and look at the attachment. And we want this one here, the attachment offset. Let's come into here, position, and place it along the Z. And using the up arrow on the keyboard, I'm going to place it above, somewhere above. And we use the view sketch to bring this back around. Now we've got this into position. Let's use the slot tool. Let's attach to this axis and bring this out, add our holes somewhere like here. Right click to cancel, let's make those two equal. Using a quality constraint and we can adjust it into place. Remember we can pull in the edges for tangency. I'm just going to place that in place. Make sure that's on there as well. Most tasks hit close. We've got our shape, but I've forgotten one important element. That's the rectangle. It's going to go around the outside, making sure it covers all of the volume inside. Let's right click to cancel, close. And now I can take the sketch and use a pocket. Dimensions through all, and we have our shape. 
This entire workflow can be done with a single part design body, but it becomes more flexible by using multiple bodies. This can be achieved by creating one body for the extruded side profile and another for the top profile. Instead of using an inverse pocket, we create the profile as it appears, then add a pad that extends it all the way through the extrusion of the other body. We now have two bodies, and we can use these in the part design boolean operation. Selecting the common boolean type, which removes any volume not shared by both bodies, leaving the desired result. Let's demonstrate the boolean workflow by adapting our current project. So we have the body, our last operation was the pocket, which I'm going to delete. To create a new body, make sure nothing's selected and create a new body. And this is going to be the tool body. Let's right click and rename that to tool body. Come into the other body, this one here, and take the sketch and drag it up onto the main document icon and drop it. So now it's outside. I can then drag this into the tool body. The attachment support is here. Let's make sure that's on the right plane. So it's saying XY plane 001. And if I look at the origin, it's saying 001. Let's press the space bar and you can see it's on the XY plane 001. So we're all good to go. Press the space bar again to hide that. Double click the sketch and I want to remove the rectangle. So I'm going to select all those lines, adding it to the hungry selection and hit in delete. And let's hit close. So now I've got two bodies. I've got the active body, which is the tool body, and the additive pipe, which is in the upper body. Tool body is active, so I can take that sketch and pad that. At the moment, it's going 10 millimeters. I want to pad it in reverse. And I want to send that pad all the way through the upper body. So I'm pressing the up arrow making sure it goes all the way through and you can see it in there. Let's hit OK. The tool body is active at the moment. Let's double click the body with the additive pipe. That becomes bold, it's active. Making sure nothing's selected and then use the Boolean operation. The active body has disappeared. Let's add body and click the tool body. Next, we have to change this to common. Using this workflow instead of an inverse pocket offers more flexibility. We can have multiple separate shaped volumes for different finishes. Using the body that holds the padded top profile, we can clone it using the part design clone and use the clones against multiple shaped side profile volumes. So to demonstrate that, we use our current project and I have the body and the boolean within. Let's click the boolean and hit delete. That releases the tool body. This is going to be the template. So let's rename that and we'll call it template body. So our template body will be the tool when we clone it. Take the template body and use the clone. Template body is still visible. Let's press the spacebar on that and right click the clone, rename it to tool body. So we have a clone of the template body. Let's right click our original body. And this is going to be the shape. I'm going to call this curved body. The curved body is the active body. You can see it in bold. If not, double click it or right click and set the active body. Now we can run our Boolean operation. Make sure nothing selected, use the Boolean Come over and click add body and then click on the tool body. We have to change this to common. We have our finished result. If I hit OK, what we have now is the boolean that's inside the curve body. And if I collapse this, we still have the original template body here. So if I created a new body, and let's hide the curve body and I'm going to show the template body. Click on the template body and press the space bar. Let's look at this from the side view. So now if I create a new sketch, first of all, make sure nothing's selected. 
That means when we create a new sketch, it goes onto the base planes. And we can see the base planes down here, the XZ. This one here, let's hit OK. I'm going to need to use the section view. So let's use the section view or right click view section. And now I can start placing the profile in here. Let's create something simple using the polyline. And I'm just going to go for a simple profile like this. Let's place something in like this. Right click to cancel and again. See the profile in there? Let's close that. Profile is sitting inside this object. So if I highlight the sketch, you can see it in there. Just roll over it. Let's click it and use the pad. So you can see it's in the middle there. Let's use symmetrical to plane and increase the size. Let's say 50 millimeters and click off. Make sure it's come through all of the object. Now I can see it's not far enough this way. Let's just okay that. Come back into the pad. Double click that sketch. Let's move this out and hit close. Our body is active, the shape that we want. So our main shape is ready. Let's take the template body again and clone it. Remember to click on the template body and press the space bar to hide it. So this is now the tool body. Let's just rename that to tool body. It's named it tool body 001 because we've already got one called tool body. That's fine. Let's click off. The active body is still the shape. So we can use the boolean and then add body using the tool body and again use the common. And we've got the shape that we want. So now what we have is that we have two versions in the same document. Running off of clones for the tool body. Another scenario is when both volumes cannot be defined by a single 2D profile. But incorporate multiple operations that make up a more complex form. The common can create almost a hybrid between these two parts. In our next lesson, we'll venture into that workflow using both the common and the shape binder together. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the next lesson. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.